Well, it's not yours. Let go, please. Theo, let go. Three. Two. Make a better choice, please. You're not being very kind. That's not Theo. a that's not a good choice. Theo. Theo, make a good choice, please. Ouch. Theo, Abby, don't hit him. That's also not a good choice. Theo, get out. Theodore, get out of the bucket. This sibling conflict could have been very mild or even prevented if the mom would have applied three, three key actions. My focus today is going to be parents of highly sensitive kids or parents of neurodivergent kids. So if you have a highly sensitive child or a neurodivergent child, then stay. Before we go there, my name is Marcela Collier. Hello. I'm a certified parenting coach. I'm founder of HIC Parenting Education Agency. My team of coaches and I have served 14,151 parents in coaching, bring peace to their parenting and raise their highly sensitive kids and neurodivergent kids with a lot more peace. Okay, so let's talk about that action number one. Theo, that wasn't nice. Theo, can you help her pick those up, please? Okay, stop knocking them down, please. And kicking them. If we want our child to listen to us when they're having an interaction with their sibling, it's important to understand what they're capable of giving us at their developmental stage. Telling the child don't knock them down, please, is not developmentally expected from a toddler to have the coordination to not knock the tower down or whatever thing the sibling was doing down because they are not a coordinating walking and they don't measure what they're doing with their limbs. So he was with a little doll back and forth. He cannot follow that developmentally. We need to help him. And she started great telling him what to do, help her pick up the things. And he did. So it's not that our toddlers don't listen to us. It's that we don't know yet how to talk to them so they understand. In this case, she was successful in that very specific moment. Okay, Bubba, you need to stop, okay? When I say stop, you stop. Theo? Stop! stop. Theo? Theo, the baby's not that dizzy. You want your toddler to listen to you? Tell them what to do instead of what not to do instead. Tell them, hey, I need you to come here, give me a big hug, show me your doll. So that way you give your child the opportunity to be successful in that interaction. He is not developmentally ready to say, hey, I need to take space from my sibling because I'm too, if I'm too close, then I'm going to knock down her play. You have to anticipate and ensure that happens. It could have been showing him something else. It could have been that setting him up in a different place with more Legos so he can build play as well. This mom was communicating constantly, but she was not involved. When it comes to helping our toddlers, especially our highly sensitive ones, solve their conflict peacefully and fast, we need to get involved. I have an autistic child, he's eight years old, and I still need to get involved because autistic kids, a lot of the times don't pick up on those cues from their siblings or even their verbal commands. So we need to physically intervene maybe by redirecting them to show you something or moving them away from the other siblings uh, PlayStation. You have to intervene, otherwise leaving it up to them for them to know how to make the right choice, it's a bottle uphill and it's just going to escalate the, the behavior, the sibling interaction. I say mom! Stop! Abby, he can play with the baby because you're playing with the castles. Number two, helping our children 
see how they can play together peacefully. And in this regard, the mom did great. She showed both of their kids what they could do. She told the daughter, hey, you, I mean, you can keep playing with your Lego towers or your magnets or whatever thing she was building, the castle. And your, your brother can play with the doll. And you know, did you see the daughter's reaction? She said, oh, oh yeah, I can do that. I don't have to be so protective over my castle because my mom already built a coherent um, understanding of the interaction. I know my brother is not hanging around looking for the moment to knock my tower down, but he's just hanging around because he wants to play as well. And now he's playing with a doll and she relaxed for a little bit. So that was actually something that I recommend. Walk your children through how it looks like to share the space. I see that you want to be in the space right now. Uh, Miguel is playing with the cryas. What can you do in this space? And then have them give you ideas if they're verbal enough. For example, in this case, maybe the little girl would have given her ideas. The toddler for sure not. If you have a highly sensitive child who communicates well, have them give you the ideas. Children are more likely to reduce tension among each other when they feel that they are contrib contributors to the solution. Is that on your baby? Score. If you have a child with ADHD, I do, and my son has hyperactive type of ADHD, there might be a little extra challenge there when it comes to sibling interaction because of their need for movement. This child, the toddler, I don't know if he's neurodivergent, but just because he's a toddler, he has a big need for movement. And if you, you do you see him spinning with the doll? That spinning with the doll means I need to release energy. I need, I need to, to release it somehow, even if it's just spinning this doll. And there he's not thinking about if I'm spinning this doll, that means I'm very likely to knock down my, my sibling's tower. Yeah, don't be a turtle. Well, we don't hit him, please. That's not yeah. nice. The Leo girl hit brother on the foot, not because she was trying to be rude or not nice. She did not have the resources, the right resources and tools to set her boundaries successfully with the brother. So we don't hit, that's not nice. Won't teach her how to set boundaries with brother. That's why she kept on hitting them. Eventually she pushed them down and then it ended up in, in what it ended up. So our children, when they hit during play time, a lot of the times they're trying to protect their, their play space. They're trying to protect their game or their toys, but they don't know how to set that boundary successfully. Theo, please don't stand on her bucket. Don't pinch him. Yes, at some point I should stop this. Theo? In this case, it would have been as simple as the mom, again, taking the phone down, putting it aside, stop recording these kids, and going to the interaction and model to the daughter how to set the boundary peacefully with the brother. Ah, this is my bucket. Tell, tell Theodore, the Theo, this is my bucket. And then give her the action. Then tell him, could you please put the, the, the foot down? And if Theodore doesn't put the foot down, then you gently grab his little foot and put it down. <laughs> and that's basically how you teach your kids to set boundaries successfully with one another. It's not by you talking across the room. Theo, let go. It's not yours. Let go, please. Theo, let go. If you want your children to listen to you when they are in their sibling conflict 
and that sibling conflict escalated to the tag and pull. Now they're tagging and pulling. The, both children are dysregulated. There is no way that this little toddler would have listened to the mom. So the mom telling him, hey, Theo, let go. Let go of the bucket. It's not yours. You're not listening. Make better choices. It's like it's going over, the, over his head. <laughs> it's flying over his head. Number four, if you want your children's conflict, to de-escalate fast, leave the directions for later if they're already dysregulated. Dysregulated means that if they're already very upset, tagging and pulling, maybe hitting each other. In this case, they're not. Yeah, there was a there was hitting. Uh, the, both children are upset. There is something about brain development that is very important for you to know if you have little kids. Little kids meaning seven and under, and even 12 and under. Children are not able to listen to any logical instruction when their brain is in survival mode. So when they are at that high level of upsetness or dysregulation, that's how I call it, they are not able to listen to you. There are studies that even show that children lose muscle ear tone when they are that upset. So even physically, they hear you less. They're just very into the struggle. They're just very into winning the, the battle with against the sibling. So in that case, leave the instruction for later, Make better choices, Theo, that will not do anything. Drop the phone again and go to the children and ensure safety. In this case, I would have gone between them. I would have gotten the bucket, set it down to the side, not as a punishment, not as like, if you cannot play with this nicely, you're not going to play with this at all. Not about that. It's about removing the source of the triggers so I can focus on both of you and, and helping you calm down. There is going to be tears. There is going to be possibly they will turn from hitting each other to hitting you. And if that happens, it's not that you did something wrong or you're their doormat or you're being permissive. It's that they cannot physically, according to brain development, control their impulses when they're upset. So if you are, if you intersect them in their healing energy, they're not going to stop their healing energy because you intersected them. They will continue to try to swing at each other or swing at you. In that case, ensure that everybody's safe. I would just put one child here, the other one at the other side. I don't want to go too far from my phone from my microphone um i will hold their belly each one of them imagine this is a hand <laughs> and in that case i would i would model regulation regulation is modeled when two things happen number one when we are calm if we are not calm there is no way our kids can be calm there is a quote that is very wise very wise very true quote quote a dysregulated brain cannot regulate a dysregulated brain, meaning an upset parent cannot calm down an upset child. It cannot happen. So check yourself and, and that will help you. Check yourself. And if you're like Marcel, at this point, I think I would have yelled, I have something to help you. It is important for you to learn to manage your reactions so you can be the model for your kids. I have a free class, it is free, <laughs> where I show you the system that has helped so many of our clients go from so much reactivity to a lot more peace inside so they can be the, that model to their kids and raising their highly sensitive and neurodivergent kids with peace. To access this class, all you have to do is go to hicparenting.com 
or you can find in the description below of this video. You can raise highly sensitive children, emotionally healthy, highly sensitive children this year. I'm going to show you the story of one of our clients. Her name is Lisa with her spouse and they have a three-year-old. And this is what they're saying after working with us on the, that system that you're going to learn on our free class. It's um, surprising. It was a struggle to get him to brush his teeth. It was a struggle to get him to take a bath. It was a struggle to get him to put away his toys. We just didn't have a, a language for how to, to uh, you know, Navigate that. Them, navigate with them in, in those in those times. I pulled you to say no. I need more than just uh, articles and books. I need a parenting coach. It's it's like getting a phone number, but not getting the order <laughs> that you really need to put it in, so that you can actually dial into what you're trying, who you're trying to call. Because what kind of investment do we want to make in our family? Like I would just as easy spend the money on a trip but that trip wouldn't be very fun if you're dealing with temper tantrums and meltdowns and fast forward to 14 weeks now where are you at how do you feel parenting that amazing oh. really mind three-year-old <laughs> oh, it's so good it's like oh i knew parenting could be like this i knew it you can break your cycles of reactivity this year these parents did it with a clear roadmap and that clear roadmap is in the free class that you can access in the description below or hicprinting.com okay so let's keep analyzing what happened at the very end theo make a good choice please theo abby don't hit him that's also not a good choice theo get out That's why gentle parenting doesn't work. Things escalated. The child was fighting the, the toddler. The mom was already feeling like, I don't, I, I exhausted all my communication skills. The next thing is that I'm going to yell. Good parents don't yell because they feel yelling is the go-to strategy. Matter of fact, if this mom would have felt that way, she would have yelled out the get-go. But yelling happens because we feel it's the last resort. I don't have more tools. I already exhausted everything. What else do I do? So the way to break free from that reactivity is, is not even to learn more tools. It's to gain deeper understanding of what our children need at that particular moment from their age, from their emotional maturity, from what they need from me and learning how we can be those those role models to our children so instead of us being hands off just talking to them we are with them helping them with the interaction that's how we break free from yelling having a clear roadmap and having the skills to interact with our children at their level from the understanding of their needs if you have multiple children, say in the comments, I have multiple children because I do too. Let's meet each other. And if this video helped you, would you share it with your spouse or with one parent friend? Just share it with them. Say, hey, this video helped me. It will help me get to more parents. They all read them, will recommend me. And if you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to my channel because every week, I give you insight, tips, advice. I analyze vital content in parenting to help you bring peace to your parenting and raise highly sensitive kids and neurodivergent kids with a lot more peace. Remember, it only takes understanding of yourself and of your children's needs to transform your parenting. That's Parenting with Understanding. I'll see you next time. Bye.